In this video, we're going to be discussing how to troubleshoot your cat diesel engine for low power, and we have a Destruction of the Week segment. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be talking about a subject I get questions on daily, if not hourly, through YouTube comments, emails, and questions at work. And that is my engine has low power or it doesn't have the power it used to or boost seems lower and this can be very very difficult to troubleshoot you know i have videos talking about how to troubleshoot low boost how to troubleshoot low fuel pressure check engine lights injector cutout tests but putting it all together can be very technical and if you don't know what you're doing can cost you a lot of time frustration and money now a lot of people just want to know, well, I just need to know what part it is and I'll swap it out. Well, I put a little list together of just some of the possible causes that could be causing a low power. So let's go over it real quick. Think you got low power? Just check a few of these things for one of the possible causes. Fuel pressure, plugged exhaust, bad turbo, check engine light, bad valves, broken rocker arm, bad throttle pedal, leaking boost, plug filter, bad ECM, wiring injectors, bad fuel, sucking air, bad camshaft cylinder damage, bad cylinder head, failed lifter, bad push rod, bad fuel pump, bad roller, faulty sensor, brakes locked up, or bad head gasket. Now, if I said, oh, just check all those things I just listed and then get back to me, I'd be a real jerk because in order to troubleshoot low power complaints, you really need to start looking for symptoms. And you need to go buy these symptoms and then fix the engine when you find a problem, and that should fix the low boost. Now, it's highly possible that your engine could have more than one fault. We had a truck came in a couple weeks ago. Customer said, hey, it just has low boost. That was the only complaint. My engine has low boost, and I start the engine up, C15, dead cylinder. Bring the truck in, they have a dead injector, check the valves, everything looks good. Swap the injector, the engine runs smooth now, but still has low boost. Although the boost was higher than it was before it had the dead cylinder, but they never mentioned that it had a miss. So before you start troubleshooting and going down a path and looking at one thing and putting clear fuel lines on and testing exhaust back pressure, Start looking at symptoms. Do you have a check engine light that comes on or off or stays on? Is there any sort of weird noises? Exhaust smoke? Higher amounts or weird blow-by smoke or fumes? Anything out of the ordinary. Look at your pressures. Is oil pressure lower? If you have a fuel pressure gauge, is it lower than normal? Is the boost pressure lower than normal? Most of the time, if you have low power, boost is going to be lower. But you have to remember that boost is not always a cause of low power. It can be a symptom because if you're not firing your cylinders properly, you're going to get less exhaust flow past the exhaust turbine on the turbo, which is going to spin the intake turbine slower, and you're going to have lower boost. So you have to remember that. If you have low boost, doesn't mean you need a new turbo. So... Look at each thing and try to find something that's weird. Now we're going to be talking about check engine lights. So when a truck comes in or RV comes in and they say, hey, low power, or low boost. First thing I do is I do an engine download and I look at all the active and stored codes. Is there anything to go after? If it's a Huey engine, does it have any injection actuation pressure faults? Are there any active codes? Another good thing that I've started to do I should say I have done for a few years that has caught a few that most people would probably overlook is I look at all the sensors. Now, I don't mean I'm looking for faults. I am looking at the sensors to see not that they're coding, but are they working properly? Do we have a boost pressure sensor that while the engine's off, it's showing boost? Or maybe when you're testing the charge air cooler, the boost pressure sensor is not showing any pressure while it should be showing, let's say, 20 PSI or something like that. The temp sensors as well, they can throw you off. If the engine thinks that it's 250 degrees because you have a bad coolant temp sensor, you don't have a low power problem. You have an ECM that thinks the engine's overheating and it's going to derate you in most conditions. Look at your intake manifold air temperature, your atmospheric pressure sensor, your fuel temperature. Every sensor on that engine the ECM uses for your fuel mapping and power production. So if there's any check engine lights, those need to be addressed first. 
something weird like an intake valve actuator problem that might be logged that could be giving you low power not necessarily just from the code but that code might cause a derate condition or it might restrict fuel somehow or there's a lot of variables on that now that might not be the cause but you need to go and find problems and then fix them in an, in that order so look at all your check engine light okay if you have no check engine lights have you checked the throttle pedal when you depress it fully does it go to 100 percent we had a truck that had been brought in and it had been trouble shot several times for low power i got the truck and guess what the throttle pedal was only going to 50 percent throttle it needed a new throttle pedal it didn't need a turbo and all this other stuff things like this can if you don't check them it will send you down the wrong path but it needs to be checked and it doesn't take very long okay so next thing we're going to talk about is fuel now when i get an email most of the time with a complaint of low power um i'll get a couple snippets of information like oh it doesn't get up to a mile an hour it used to or the boost is at 30 and it used to be at 45 and i'll usually ask for are there any check engine lights which you just discussed What's your serial number? What's the boost level? And then I'll ask for, have you checked fuel pressure? And most people say no. And most cats don't have fuel pressure sensors, unfortunately. You need to check the fuel pressure. It's very easy to do. Almost all the cats and most other manufacturers are going to have a fuel pressure test port somewhere. Most of them are going to be on the fuel filter housing. And this will allow you to test the fuel pressure. Now, I've had a lot of people ask, well, do I really need to check it? Can I just crack the line and see if fuel's coming out? And the answer to that is, yes, you need to check it. If you're going to be trying to troubleshoot your fuel system, but you don't know what your fuel pressure is, you're not troubleshooting it. You're just guessing. You might as well just take parts and put them in a trebuchet and launch them at the engine, okay? Now, you can get a fuel pressure tester kit with a CompuCheck fitting that will allow you to test fuel pressure for under $100 online. And maybe it's not the best quality. You can get cat gauges and high-pressure fuel lines and stuff. But if this is something you just need to check, just get the gauge. Usually a gauge that goes up to 150 PSI, unless you have a regen engine, you'll want one that goes to like 400 then, will work fine. Most engines, most cats at least, they're running between... 70 and 110 psi of fuel pressure so get your fuel pressure gauge on there and see what the fuel pressure is a lot of the times it's just low fuel pressure without good enough fuel pressure your injectors aren't going to fire right your system's just not going to operate right and usually you won't get a check engine light because most of these engines don't have a fuel pressure sensor so they don't know that they have low fuel pressure if your fuel pressure is okay but Maybe you suspect that you have bad fuel, or if the fuel system is very old, I would recommend, even if the fuel pressure is okay, put a clear line between the transfer pump and the primary fuel filter housing and look for bubble consumption. What do I mean by this? A lot of fuel systems are sucking air somewhere, and small amounts is totally normal, but you might be getting a lot more than you should. And if you are, this can cause intermittent miss, low power, a lot of other complaints. And it might not show on your fuel pressure gauge, okay? Now, I have a fuel pressure troubleshooting video. If you do have low fuel pressure, you'll want to go watch that. It'll explain the fuel system in much more detail. Okay, so the two biggest things we've already addressed, check engine lights and fuel pressure. Now, the next one is, how is the engine running? is it a miss or a shaking condition or is it run perfectly smooth no miss or anything it just is making low power and has a lower boost and you really need to determine which it is if you have a miss at all rpms that needs to be addressed first you need to look at which cylinder is causing the miss or which condition is causing the miss and misses are not caused by the turbocharger or boost leaks or exhaust back pressure those can contribute to low power and low boost but any sort of miss or shaking that is going to come from the engine itself of course this could be valve train related this could be weak cylinders bad valves bad injectors um, bad fuel pump bad camshaft a lot of those things and a lot of people aren't going to have a way to 
figure out which cylinder it is without, you know, caddy T or some way of doing cylinder cutout tests. And a lot of people will look at the exhaust manifold, maybe hit it with an infrared gun to see the temperatures. But most of the on highway exhaust systems, they have a log style. Uh, any of the log style exhaust manifolds, that's really not an accurate way to tell. This isn't something with headers where you can say, oh, that one's cold and this one's hot because the end ones are always going to be cooler than the inner ones and there's really no ports between the head and the manifold so that's not a real accurate way to tell by measuring each one some guys can find it and kind of make it work for them but it's it's fairly ineffective if you had an infrared camera perhaps that would show a little more of the heat signature but just hitting it with an infrared gun that's not a great way of telling on anything with a log style exhaust manifold okay now let's say okay it runs smooth there's something else going on so now we need to look at your air intake and your exhaust system so let's assume no check engine light fuel pressure is good engines running very smooth and no weird noises or smoke out of the exhaust system but it's still making low power and low boost let's say it's 50 percent of what it was before and maybe you think oh i need to th oh. maybe you think okay well i need to throw a turbo on this a lot of the low boost complaints i get are not a bad turbocharger the turbochargers you can inspect the the housings the fins see if they spin freely and most of the time it's not the turbocharger unless it's seizing up or it's locked in place or it's pushing oil, something like that. The turbos usually work okay. And if you have a turbo failure, you usually know it. You'll usually be pushing oil into the intake or the exhaust or it won't build any boost. So you need to start looking at things related to the turbocharger. And you can inspect the turbo in like half an hour to see if it seems to be working properly. Now there are things on the turbo itself, like the wastegate. Those will fail a lot. And they won't necessarily fail, let's say stuck open although they will stick open it sometimes they can open too early there's an air diaphragm in most wastegates and if they're opening too early maybe it makes normal boost up to you get to a very heavy load and then the wastegate's opening much too early so you would be losing your top end boost but not your bottom and low end boost if that makes sense so that's something you need to look at i have a very detailed boost troubleshooting if you suspect it's just your boost system but a lot of the things that you find when it comes to just boost related low power complaints is cac leaks or boots leaking you might have a hole in a boot or the clamps over time have just deteriorated or aren't clamping properly or the boots have deteriorated and it's allowing a lot of leaks between the turbo and the intake manifold and enough of those leaks, you can lose several PSI of boost pressure, which is going to reduce the power because your boost is related to your fuel consumption. So as you decrease in boost, you're going to decrease in fuel consumption and fuel and air is what makes horsepower. And that's on the intake side. Now, just because the intake side's okay doesn't mean there's nothing to check on the exhaust side. I've seen several low boost complaints be caused by plugged exhaust systems. And this is particularly true on anything with a DPF. But even if you're running just normal mufflers, mufflers break down over time and they can become restricted, sometimes heavily. I've driven trucks where you're starting to get several PSI of back pressure in the exhaust. Now, if you can't get enough air through the exhaust, it's not going to spin the turbo and it's not going to push air into the engine. Because remember, your engine's basically a big air pump. And if you can't get air out, you can't get as much air in. So that's something you need to check. And you would be able to check that if you had a... You could use even your fuel pressure gauge if you had the right fittings. But you'd probably want something much lower in uh, restrictor in restriction psi so a good thing to get would be go to a hardware store and get like a a uh, natural gas gauge they usually go to about 15 psi you could hook that up to your exhaust system and see while you're running is it getting over one psi if it is it's restricted most likely now unless you have a dpf you got to be careful on dpfs because they are restrictive by nature now those you'll usually see about one psi under a load but maybe they're getting up 
three, four, five, six PSI of back pressure. That's getting excessive, and in that case, you'd probably need to get your DPF, or if it has an SCR canister, cleaned or replaced if it's causing your low boost condition, okay? So we've already talked about most of the major components that can lead to a low power, and most of the items that are going to cause low power problems are what we've already discussed. We're kind of getting into the weirder things now. So you need to start looking at exhaust smoke or other things like this, something, something not typical to a low power complaint if everything else seems to check out. So maybe your engine doesn't smoke, but under a heavy load, it starts to black smoke or white smoke. This can be cause for concern, even if it's not missing, that, hey, maybe you need a set of injectors or let's start looking at other items that you would need to be real technical on. Like if you had a Huey system, what's the injection actuation pressure under a heavy load? Maybe it's not building what it's supposed to, or maybe it's building too much and it's causing a heavier load on the engine. We had a truck once that came in and he said, oh, it's, it's not accelerating like it used to. And I brought it in. It, one of his brakes was locked up, but it cammed over and it was just dragging. And, uh, it was, it was pretty apparent to me right away, but for some reason the driver didn't realize it. Uh, there's a lot of little things outside of the normal failures. So if it's not one of those normal failures, you're probably most likely going to have to take it to a dealer if you're not very technical or you don't have means to communicate with the ECM. And the ECM itself can lie to you or it can be the cause of the fault but it won't usually tell you that it is i've had trucks that on the dyno they'll be running fine and this was on a c7 once i had it on the dyno and for some reason after about 20 minutes of running under a heavy load it would just lose power nothing mechanically wrong with the engine and we put a test ecm on it and the complaint went away i that's very rare but it was the cause the ecm was the cause and things like this can be very, very hard to find. So that's why you need to eliminate kind of the, each system individually. And once you know you get to have a good fuel system and your boost system's not leaking, you can kind of attack weird complaints from that point forward. And this is kind of the start for your troubleshooting because this video to go over everything that caused low boost or low power, I should say, it would take hours and hours. It would basically be a class. And this video is just to kind of get you started. And if you go through these major things that we've discussed in this video, nine times out of 10, you're gonna find it yourself if you have the means of troubleshooting yourself on these systems of check engine lights, uh, sensors reading correctly, your fuel system, and your intake and exhaust system, okay? I hope this video was uh, technical enough, but it still made sense to you, and I hope it helped you find the problem. All right, thank you. In this week's Destruction of the Week, we have a few DOT violations. So this truck came in for an exhaust leak, but I noticed that there were a few brake problems. Namely, that he's missing big pieces of his brakes. Also, this drum is cracked all the way through. This wasn't the only crack on this drum either. Now this other truck we had in the shop this week only needed injector cups, but I noticed, hey, that doesn't look right. I believe shocks are supposed to be mounted to their mounts. All right, thought you'd enjoy that. <laughs>